Note taking is an extremely personalized process. So what I thought I'd do is actually show you how I take notes and how I clip things from the internet and put that into my Notion system to sort for ideas, any notes and anything like that. This video follows on from previous videos that go over my entire Notion system. So if you've missed some of those previous videos, I suggest having a quick look just to understand the structure of my space. So with that said, let's dive in. On my dashboard, I have my notes and ideas database, and that is pretty much where I capture absolutely everything. And what I'm going to do is go into Seth's blog. Seth Godin is an individual blogger that I read quite often. Now, I don't capture every single one of his blogs because not all of them resonate with me. So... I will read through the blog, and if it doesn't resonate with me, then I will just leave it. If it does, I will then use the Notion Clipper, and I will save it to my Notes and Ideas database. Now, once I've clipped it into that database, I don't really need to do anything, because it's there and sorted. So I have captured that blog. If I was to go onto YouTube, it's a very, very similar process. So we'll go into YouTube very quickly, and you can see we've got a Ceph video up there. Perfect timing. So I'll click on the video, and now I'm on the video page. Now, typically, I won't actually watch videos straight up. I will save them to my watch later list, so I'll add them to watch later, and then I will go through my watch later playlist all together, so I'm watching videos in a flow state, and I can just get the things done. And once I've watched the video, I will then decide whether actually I want to review that again. And if I do want to review it again, that is when I will clip it to my Notion database. I won't do it beforehand because I don't know whether it's going to be worth clipping. So again, I will go to my Notion Clipper. I will clip it to that Notes and Ideas database. Now, there is another extension that you can save certain templates for, and you can add relations and properties and things like that for the clipped information. And I have tried that, and I'll leave a link in the description if that's something you're interested in. But for me, capturing that information and processing that information are two separate things. And if I was to add the areas or any tags into it, I would be partly processing that captured information while I'm capturing it. And for me, capturing and processing are two separate things, so I do them individually. So I capture the information into my notes database. Now when I go to my dashboard, I actually don't go straight in and process those notes. I leave them there for a couple hours, maybe a couple of days, and in some cases they may sit there for almost a week. What this allows me to do is actually go back to the note, go back to the video with a clear mind so I can go over that information for a second time. Now, when I go into the note, this is a blog post, I'll get rid of the picture because I don't really need that. I will highlight everything, I will cut it, and then I will paste it back in once I've selected the template I feel is appropriate for this note. Now, in this case, it's a blog, and what I typically do with small blog clips or ideas or anything like that is I write about it in my blog. So I turn the note into my own words. So I'm rephrasing whatever I've read, whatever I've seen, whatever I've heard or any ideas I've got. Now, when I add that template in, what it does is it adds the area tag to that note. And if you haven't seen my areas video, I suggest having a look. But what I've essentially done is I've tagged that note with an area. So I've now processed this note for the first time. I've captured the note, it's gone into my database. Now I've processed the note, so I've reread or rewatched and decided I just need to blog about this or I'm just going to write another note on this. And in this case, it was a blog, so blog template. I tagged it with blogging. I go into my blogging space and there's the note. So I've captured it and processed it. Then when I've processed all the other notes, that note will then reappear. So this is going to be the second time I'm going to process the note. So you can see on Sunday, I have all of those notes that I previously captured and processed that I'm going to process again. So I'm not only capturing the information once, so I'm consuming it once, and then processing it a second time to actually categorize it. Then I'm processing it a third time to actually turn it into something. So I'm sharing that information. I'm reframing those notes. And then when I actually go in and create that blog post, I then have a fourth interaction with that information. And then as you can see with the blogs, I have a month summary. So August summary is a summary of all of the blog posts that I've made in that month, which gives me five contact points with any note that I've taken. 
And obviously this is spaced over time, so I could be getting different ideas that relate to that note. And because it's still fresh in my mind, because of the amount of times I've seen the note, I can then create the different links between new notes, old notes, and that month summary is obviously going to collect all of those things together. Now, not all notes are as small as this and are just going to go straight in as a blog post or as something I'm going to write about. Some of them are big articles, big resources. So take that video that I clipped from YouTube. That's half hour, 40 minutes video. Now, that isn't going to be one blog post. There's going to be more than one thing in there. So I'm going to use my resources template and then I'm going to go over this video again. And what this resource template does is it puts linked databases in for this resource. So this is a high level resource and I'm likely to create numerous notes from this resource. So as I start writing things down, maybe I get a blog idea or a small note or maybe another note or in the case of an article, I may create a note from the note and then create notes from that note. And what this system allows me to do is create that hierarchy of notes. Now, when I'm watching long content or podcasts or reading long articles, it may remind me of tasks to do or actually give me ideas of things that I want to do. So I can make a task related to this resource in this page. I could then create a project. Maybe I have a, a video idea or a project idea or it reminds me of something I could do or tells me something. Oh, that's actually a good idea I might want to do. And actually, in a lot of cases, when I was studying, a lot of the resources that I was consuming were related to assignments. So I wanted to create flashcards so I could create flashcards in this page, write the first text, second text and dump it straight into my flashcards database. And then I have space repetition, active recall all set up from this note and it's all related. So the flashcard that I've created from this note, I can go straight back to this note for reference if I can't remember the flashcard when I am reviewing it. And because of the self-referencing filters that Notion brought in earlier in the year, all of these databases are related to this note, so I can always go back to the original high up resource, i.e. the video, to find out where I got the task, the project, the flashcard, or the notes from. Now I've created a note from this note and because this note doesn't currently have a context, it's actually going to show on my dashboard because I haven't processed this note. So even though I've made a note in a note, I can then process. So I've captured a note in a note and then I need to process that note again. So I will wait hours, minutes, days, sometimes weeks to then process that sub note of the main note. And the same process happens. So this note from the high up resource note could actually be another resource. So in the case of Tiago Forte's para article, the P of the para article was actually a resource in itself. So I had the para article as a resource. Then I had the P as another resource. And then I had notes from that. And those notes became those small points that I'm going to action. And then I could go all the way back to the original article. Now, because the database is the same, all of the same functionalities work. So I've made a sub note from that big note, which is a resource, and I've tagged it with blogging. So it's going to go into my blogging space. And when I go to create that blog idea, if I forget what that blog idea was, what that note was, I can go back to the original source, the, the original resource, because the note is already related. Now, I don't just grab notes from surfing the internet, looking at Twitter or blogs or YouTube or anything like that. There are actually notes and things that I get from meetings. So if I'm in a business call, if I'm in a normal call, a Zoom call, anything like that, if I have a meeting that I may need to grab notes for, again, I have a different place to capture that information. So when I go into my events template, which is in my tasks database, you can see it links my notes database inside that page. And again, I'm using that self-referencing filter. So the notes I make here are going to be related to this task event, which means the note could become a resource or I could make sub notes on that note and it can go all the way down. But no matter how far I go with the flashcards, the tasks, the projects, the sub notes, it will always link back to the event where I got it from. If you're interested to learn more about how my system works, make sure you check out this video over here and I'll see you there.